All right, we're all done porting out these heads and cleaning. So this is one. This is two. They look the same? Hopefully. Okay, now we do our assembly. We already previously marked the valve, so this goes in the rear, so it's got an R on it. That's an F for front. This one here is an F for front. And the other one's missing. Ran away. Looks like the motor stole it. That'd be the R valve. These are our upper and lower collars, titanium. Steel on the bottom. Then we're going to put the 155 keepers in it, like we talked about earlier. These silver ones, instead of the black ones, which are the 175. They're supposed to be red, but they're black now. Alright, so we're going to do all that. <clears throat> this is the seal that came in the seal kit, or in the gasket set from James. You don't like these seals too much. I have a tendency of cutting them in half. Push them on too far and they slice them right off the top. Cuts the top right off. Gotta be careful. I like to slice them. Alright, we already checked our TD clearances before. That'd be the, uh, the valves hitting each other. This clearance. So basically, the clicky way of doing that is you put the valves in here, stand the head up a little bit, open your valve up about 200 thou, like these are supposed to be. About the same on that. And we got clearance down there. So the clearance between the valve is your TD clearance. So that's kind of an important number. Oh, see how you look clearance between the valve heads there? Now I didn't measure exactly how these are. They're probably close to being like that. But I already measured them, so I know they're good. <clears throat> okay, next thing you're to worry about is coil bind clearance. That is easy not a problem on uh, Gevo motors, unless you have a really high lift cam. This is only a 500 lift cam, so no big deal. Basic coil binding clearance is you take the springs and coil bind them hard in a vise, measure it, take that dimension, add your valve lift, which is 500, then add a little extra clearance, at least 30, add 50 to be safe, so that would give you 550, plus whatever this is. So let's say this is 1 inch, that makes it 1550. If this was 1.2 inches, it would be 1750. That's closer to what it really is. but. So anyway, and then just the distances between the collars here, you measure between here and here when the motor's when it's assembled. That'll give you a number. So I'm not concerned about the valve uh, clearancing. I'm not concerned about the coil bond. I'm not concerned about spring tension. We'll have enough. But all of those things can be measured if you need to. These are. Uh, this kit puts out 175. When I change out the keeper, it's 175. That's at 1825 or 850 install highs. So it's all pretty generic on these motors, so you don't have to measure the stuff over and over and over. Unless you want to. I don't want to. So I'm going to skip it. But we are going to assemble the heads. Okay, so I need to be on this side of the workbench. So that means we're moving. You're going over here. All right. I'm going to be able to get my spring compressor. All right, we need a couple tools also, a couple hammers, screwdriver, important stuff like that. Okay, now we got to figure out how we're going to compress these things and push them onto the, onto the valve. So you have to have something to push this with. I'm not sure we're supposed to use, so let's go find something. Universal black one here will work. 
probably be a little tight though once it's installed on the ID in here. It'd be nice if it's opened up just a little bit more for clearance. I wonder if I got one I've already opened up. I've been known to do that. This one's already been opened up. See, here's another black one. This does not fit. See, it doesn't. It won't stick in the bottom. So that means I've already cut this one out for clearance. That's why it fits in there now. See, it's been modified. These are different. Somebody butchered it. I don't know who would do something like that. I also got the kibble white ones I butchered too. I wonder if one of those will work. Find out. Oh, they are. These are fancy kibble white ones are color coded for some reason. Okay. This one has a 3 ace hole in it. So I know we're not using that one. This one here is a big flat seal. Pretty sure that's not going to work on this. Nope. That would crush the seal. So that leaves the red one. Appears to be modified already. Look at that. Fits right in there like it's supposed to go in there. See the clearance? It's got clearance. Alright, so this one's already been butchered. If you notice, every one of these has been cut already. Because they don't make them right. Like most tools, I redo them. Okay, I'm going to use the red one. Alright. Let's see if we can screw up something. Okay, I'm going to use a little assembly lube. Stem. Make sure you put in the right, correct head. In this case, the rear one. Goes right in. <clears throat> the other one. Front head. I'm going to try putting a seal on and see if it goes on. <clears throat> First thing I check to make sure it will clear the collar. collar. <clears throat> okay, it fits barely. It does fit. You can put these on right now if you want. But this tool, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to put this on. Now to keep from chewing up the seal, I just kind of wiggle it back and forth as I'm pushing on it. Push a slight angle, and it goes right down. Doesn't want to go over this part. There it goes. Okay. I'm just going to push my finger. Okay. It's down. I think I already got the seal on too far down. <clears throat> I don't think it's got any tension on it. If you push the seal on too deep, it spreads back open and then it doesn't do anything. 
This one looks like it's spread up pretty far. I'm going to try another one, see if it feels the same. I'm going to do this one over here. See how you just rotate around like that. There it goes down. Because I'm not going that far down. See how it doesn't look like there's a gap in there now? See how this one here has a gap in it? It's down too far. So this means you got to push it, pull it back up a little bit. Back down again a little bit easier. This time you only put a couple pounds of pressure, not push it hard. Looks a little better, but still, still looks like there's a little bit of a gap to it. Now if you take it off the seal, off the valve stem, like this. Bring it back up, you can feel how much tension is on the seal. Not a lot. Let's check this one. This one's got a little bit more tension to it. This one has about half the tension. That's why I don't like these style seals. Too finicky on how they go together. Yeah, it's just barely moved it up just a little bit. It's got tension on it now. It's got twice the tension. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna have to measure the gap between here and the collar to make sure you got enough clearance to run this thing. So you take your collar. Get your camera blowing up so much. Take your two keepers, drop the collar on the floor, so you have extras. It ran halfway down the block there. And with a keeper to go with it. I didn't want the field only. See, that's why you work over your workbench, not over the floor. Okay. <clears throat> now you measure this distance right here. And make sure you got at least what your valve lift is plus 50 thou. In this case, it's half inch lift. That's what this is. And we got more than 50 thou there. See, you got about another 3 16 clearance. So you have plenty of room for clearance on the seal. So you always got to make sure you got enough clearances. Now I go find some parts. Somebody's losing them over here on the floor. Blow the Scooby off. Nice and clean. Nice and clean. All right. Now, let's see if the collar will fit over this one. See it fit. Good deal. Okay, let's try another one. Let's see if we can screw this one up too. So you feel it, it feels like you got tension on it. Feels good. I think we're good. I'm missing another seal. How many seals do we have? Do we have four? Only got three now. Somebody will be screaming where it's at. 
Something to the hammer. And I went too far on that one. Oh, definitely too far. Not doing a damn thing. Doesn't do anything. It drops right down. Doesn't do a damn thing. Just gonna come back and pull the seal up a little bit. Make sure it's even. Still ain't got much tension on it. Pull up some more. Got a little tension on it now. A little extra. There, starting to get a little tension now. So actually have to put a little pressure on it before it goes. Alright. You can see how much I love these seals. They're actually good seals, they just ain't worth a squat for assembly. These are metal. You beat them on until they bottom out on a steel piece on the inside, and then they work. Now if you really go too far, you beat the whole center out, and then it doesn't work. but Because you push the that inner washer in, and it'll pull it right up in here. But you got to hit pretty hard. But these work pretty good. So they're metal on metal. I put a little Loctite on them. They seal up. They stay put. I like them. And they're lower profile too. So you got more more clearances. Modern stuff. Eh, whatever. It's supposed to be better. Debatable. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and assemble these. So, yeah, spring compressor. Ugh. Use a big pneumatic one. You gotta blow real hard at the end of it. This thing comes out, it's a big air ram in here, and it compresses it. Alright, so and the valve spring, and the collar. We got the cardboard down to protect the paint. Actually, it's coating, not paint, but it's easier to just call it paint. I just hold the lower keeper in first, my finger. I don't like putting oil and grease on everything. And the upper one, you just drop down right on top of the other keeper, on top of the stem there. I'm trying to send the spring up and let it release it. When you do it right, it doesn't plop out. The problem with crane parts is they have a very, very shallow groove. See how low that groove is? It's only about 20 thou tall. It bites hard when it's assembled, but the problem is when you assemble it, it doesn't have much to grab a hold of it. When the spring compressor on does, it likes to pull your finger off with the keeper. There you go. After it's on, you take a look at it. Looks like it's good. Go to the next one. Did I put the lower collar on that? No. Dumbass didn't put the lower collar on it. Could just say you don't need it. Throw in the gas tank when you're done, it'll find its way home. That's always a good one. Just extra parts you don't need, right? Looks good. Uh oh. Appears there's no lower collar on this one. 
There's one. It took two times to put on before. How many times this time? Practice, I got the first one. Okay, the keepers look like they're in the way. What I do is I take my flat blade screwdriver and I whack it right on the center of each keeper just to make sure they're seated. Don't stand in front of it unless you want to get hit. That does two things. I make sure it's seated. It also, I can hear a little spring so I know about how much tension is on it. If there's a weak spring, you can tell. Okay, those are pretty well done. Now, this is a good time to add your seals and your O-rings in here if you want. They can be interesting to put those in. Those are over here in the gasket set someplace. These are head base gaskets. Here's a bunch of crappy O-rings we're not using yet. No, here's our exhaust seal. We'll need those. What crappy O-rings. Looks like I don't see the fat ones. Oh, there they are. The fat ones are in the bottom. We need those fat ones. Okay, let's see if these will fit. These can be interesting putting in at times. Okay, now these are the ones that take the non-tapered style. So these only work if you got a good fitting exhaust system. If you got a piece of crap system, these don't work. Sometimes these don't like to fit in there very well, which is pretty much most of the time. You gotta kind of squeeze them in a little bit. These are one up breaking. Put your thumbnail there and kind of squeeze it in and down at the same time. Keep it over the edge. We can use a little bit of a screwdriver to do it. But you have to push it down and in at the same time. By now the seal kind of digs in like this in the sideways, catches the lip right here, and it rolls around. So you have to get the lip on here and then shove it in. These are set and done. Thumbnails work the best. If you got the nail, is your piece that gets in behind it, and you push it with your thumb. Okay, after it's all the way in there, you can take a little screwdriver and make sure it's all the way down. It's in there. Now, when you tighten the pipe in here, this doesn't plug up the hole too much. We have those fat tapered ones. It likes to plug up half the port, so it's not very good. The S, &S gasket has a, has the big ID, so it doesn't plug the port up too much, but it has a real tall height to it. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. But if you have a good exhaust system, these ones work the best. But we don't know which one we have, so. These are the ones that came in the kit, so these are the ones we're going to use. Oh, I forgot a seal. Okay, these are the push rod upper cover seal here. The fat ones are anyway. Call them fat because they're fat. Just poke them in there, they should stay put. These ones are kind of slippery. Probably because it's got that coating in the head that makes it slippery. This is kind of slippery, you can feel it. Okay, this head's fully loaded now. So as long as we don't lose all the parts, we're good. Now you gotta check to make sure these are on there before the head's gone, in case they fall down. Okay, that's our front head. I'm going to do our rear head. Same thing. Now if you want to know what the install height is, you measure the valves right now. You will know if that's important to you. I'll measure it here in a minute. Okay. So, lower collar. This one's already in there. Upper collar. Uh, 
Now the reason I put lower valve spring tension on these is because we have titanium collars. These are nice and light so you don't have to have as much tension. It'll make the rocker arms, push rods, and lifters a lot more happier if you don't have all that spring tension on there. It'll also make less valve train noises so the motor run quieter. If that matters to you. Parts up on the wall, your tools up here on the wall. See? And they're out of the way, but you got access to them. And most of the time you got walls, all you do is put stupid ass pictures up there instead of parts that matter. I like to look at my tools more than I do posters, see. I don't have any posters up. I don't have any advertising up either because I have no sponsors. Not that I care about them anyway. Okay, this is your scale. You measure. You want to measure how much your install height is. You take your head. You measure from the base of the lower collar to the upper edge. Looks like about 875. 1.875. 860 is stock, so we're 15 below it. Okay, this one here, it's hard to see where the edge of the spring is at. This one looks like about a little bit more, about 880. 1.880. Was that the intake? Oh, that was the exhaust. <laughs> that one looked higher in the port, but it's, it's a little bit higher on this side. So instead of being 155 pound tension, we're a little bit under that because we're 15 thou lower. So now we're only 153 pounds or 150 pounds. I can still live with that. I'm good with that number. The S and S spring kits are now down to 130 pounds. Same as stock Harley springs are supposed to be. Not sure how they do that one. Okay, our gasket. This one's a little bit tighter, it feels. See, it wants to roll over. You want to roll over. If you roll it over, it screws up the gasket. See, the thumbnail works good. Best tool there is. I use my thumbnails for a lot of things. And fingernails. That's why they're always broken off. I use them for all kinds of things. Okay, we didn't beat this with a hammer yet. So make sure we hit it with a hammer. They're good. Now you notice I'm using a plastic hammer on my plastic screwdriver. Instead of my steel hammer on the plastic. Makes my hammer my screwdriver live longer. Kind of important to me. Okay, so there's your heads. Or customer says, I should say. All right, let's get them over here out of the way. So far, I haven't scratched them up too much yet. I got a couple of nicks. Let's see if the customer can figure out where they're at. All right. So there's my motor over there, or customer's motor. It's my motor. If I worked on it, it's my motor. I don't care who owns it. Okay, these are now all clear coat sprayed with 
Tech Line Coatings uh, Ultra Fancy uh, Clear Coat. Supposed to be good for 6,500 plus salt spray hour testing. That's pretty high. Chrome's only like 500. The powder coat's like 1,500 and 2,500 max. So this is 6,500. It's way up there. So basically, this should stay this color for probably 10 years. This motor's going to Hong Kong, so it has a lot of heat and a lot of humidity, kind of like being in Florida. So, we'll see how long it stays this color. I'm sure he'll let me know. So, there's a lot of work doing it. Now, all the chrome hardware is all done too, so it won't rust either. At least that's the plan. <clears throat> so, we'll figure that out. Now, the cylinders, or well, the heads are coated the same stuff too. The head cylinders are over here. They are have a heat dissipant coating on them. So that actually makes it run colder than stock. The coating will dissipate about 25% of the heat. It's very, very thin buildup. You see how we didn't tape anything off when we sprayed them. So these I'm going to scrape these out, clean them up, and get them ready to go on the motor. So I'm going to use my carbonator. My carbide scraper, super scraper. These guys sell if you need one. Goods and it's solid carbide. We'll knock this down to nothing. This coating is only one towel. Supposed to be only one towel build up. You can see how nothing's really coming off. Now over here I scraped with my pocket knife. This surface right here is raised up above the top a little bit. So you have to get below that to get any coating off. Kind of need two hands to do this. But anyway, I'm going to scrape that a little bit with a super scraper. See if anything comes off. <clears throat> if nothing comes off, I'm going to leave it. So. Staying on there pretty good. Okay, so after going around the whole thing, that's how much I got off. Yep, it's gone, it's powder. It's basically no build. What that marks from. Anyway, this is good for uh, over a thousand degrees temperature. So you shouldn't be burning it off anytime soon. So it's pretty good. Let's see if we get anything off the bottom. It's also anti graffiti. Nothing sticks to it. And most acids and other chemicals will not cut it. I don't know anything that cuts it off yet. Just it blasting it off or baking it off. Of course, this temperature is, I think it's above aluminum, so you can't do an aluminum. So there's how much buildup we got again. All right, so these are pretty clean, as expected. So you got massive coating. That was extra thick layer. See, it just goes away. It just kind of pulverizes and disappears. It does scratch though, so you have to be careful about that. Alright, 
nothing really there. We had to double check just to make sure. Okay, I'm gonna go clean these up and we'll be back.